morning. It's good to be with you today. My name's uh, David Effler. I'm pastor of Matthew 633, Open Our Ministry. It's good to be with you today. We thank the Lord and praise Him for a, a beautiful day. It's out. It is out there. It's uh, uh, the weather we're having here where I'm at. It's uh, warm and it's supposed to be up about 60 degrees today. And I thank the Lord for that. That's good for uh, the first February. And uh, uh, I think we're getting into the first, about the end of the first week. And I thank the Lord and praise Him that uh, God is great. God is gracious. He, man, this is another day of grace that God has given you and I. Uh, you, man. All right. Uh, this morning we're going to get into the book of Revelations, chapter 14. And I want to read to you this morning by the help of the Lord from verse 14 on through the end of the chapter. And uh, we dealt. Uh, and uh, a couple of weeks ago on uh, uh, the people that will be worshiping the devil during this last time and down in the end of this thing. And friend, devil worship is nothing uh, that is not common to the world today. That There's been people worshiping the devil for a lot of years. Amen. Ever since Jesus was down here on this earth, amen, he came and brought uh, a new and living way, amen, and uh, the world that turns their back against God and against the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, they worship the things of the world and uh, of the devil and and uh, all of that stuff. You man, they have a place for them, and we dealt with that quite a bit a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I thank the Lord and praise Him, Amen. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, I don't have to go to that awful place. You say, how do you know that, preacher? I know that I know that I know, friend, that I've been saved by God's marvelous grace. You say, how do you know that? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God down in my heart and soul. Amen. And I know that. And we're dealing with a group of people here uh, that was left behind. Amen. When the church is raptured, you'll find that in Revelation chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. And uh, the church was taken out of this world. Now, the word rapture is not in the word of God. Amen. But the catching away and the taking out is uh, displayed in several different places down through the word of God. Uh, amen. As we begin to look into uh, these verses of scripture here, and we dealt last week by the help of God on the white robe saints. And you'll find that in verses chapter 14, verses uh, uh 12 and 13, let me read that to you. And uh, I just want you to understand, friend, he's dealing with two groups of people here. He's dealing with a group of people, friend, that is uh, uh, worshiping Satan. Amen. They fell into an ungodly system set up by the Antichrist. You'll find that over chapter 6 uh, of the book of Revelations over there at the white horse rider when he came and, and set up there. Also in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, You'll find a verse of scripture over there. It says, he that now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. And then it goes on to say there that the man of sin will be revealed. Well, friend, we don't know who the Antichrist is today. Uh, and he's not been revealed yet because why? Because we're still living in the day of grace. A man that God has sent. This is the dispensation of grace. And the Holy Spirit of God is still here with us. The Holy Spirit of God bringeth conviction to those that will hear the word of God. Amen. And when God brings conviction to your heart, lost friend, you need to take real good thought about what's going on. Amen. God's giving you a choice to choose life or death is what he's doing, friend. There's no in between. I've said, they, you know, there's two ways, friend. You can either serve God or serve the devil, uh, whichever you, one you want to do. Now, you know, this is not a forcing way. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. God gave you an opportunity, friend, by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. And Jesus lived a perfect life. Amen. Let's get this out in front right now, friend. You can't live a perfect life down here in this world. I don't care how long you've been saved by the grace of God. Uh, I don't know. I don't care what denomination you came up in. I don't care uh, what, what kind of uh, sign that's hanging over the door where you worship, friend. You cannot live a perfect life while you're housed in this mortal body. Amen. But Jesus came into this earth, friend, and he was born of a virgin. It was a, a, a immaculate conception. 
The Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and she conceived and bare a son. You say, well, was they something ugly about what? No, friend, it wasn't. God just spoke it, friend. That's just simple as that. And uh, Jesus was formed in, in uh, Mary's womb, and he grew up. Amen. Down here in this world, uh, he lived a spotless life. Amen. He went to a place called Calvary, friend. He hung there and gave his life a ransom for your soul. Amen. You've, uh, the, uh, your sins have been paid for. Why? Because Jesus came and paid for them. Uh, uh, you and I owe a debt that we could not pay, but he paid a debt, friend, that he did not owe. Why did he do that? At, uh, uh, John 3.16, listen to what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, in that one verse of scripture there, it talks about people that perish. That's them that never never receive the Lord Jesus Christ. They never believe in the word of God. They don't accept the word of truth, friend. They're going to perish. We're going to deal with some people here as we get into the verses of scripture that I'm going to read just in a moment. But those that believe, friend, has everlasting life. Now, we dealt a couple of weeks ago with the ones that serve Satan. They're devil worshipers. That's just all you mount. That you can't go any other way. They worship the things of this world, and, and they'll follow the Antichrist wholeheartedly. You say, how do you know that? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he says, they turned away the truth. Amen. What is the truth? Now, just I've told you this many times, friend. Truth is that Jesus Christ came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. And he, he chose foolishness, of, the foolishness of preaching. Amen. Uh, friend, we have the word. And it's, it's kind of foolish that we have to continually remind you, amen. Now, I'm not foolish this morning, amen, uh, because I'm a preacher this morning. I'm, a, uh, I, I'm, I'm teaching you something and trying my best to preach to you something other that will help you, that'll, that'll point you to everlasting life. If you're just going down a road and you come up on a billboard, and we've got all kinds of billboards on the road now, and uh, they some of them that are ber very provocative, and uh, would to God they wouldn't put stuff like that out, but they do. Uh, that's the world, uh, Amen. And if you and if you turn toward that, you're you're walking toward the world, friend. Uh, but there's also some boards, uh, sign boards up that talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Uh, signs that says you must be born again, Amen. I've got one out there in my yard. Uh, that talks about uh, the Ten Commandments, amen, and that you have to be born again. I thank the Lord and praise Him, friend. They signs everywhere, amen. This is not something that's hid. This is not a mystery. Now, it was a great mystery to the early church over there. Uh, they couldn't believe because they had believed and trusted in the law and what the uh, the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and all of them, the religious leaders of that day and time, told them, uh, amen. But there was a new and living way he came, and his name was Jesus, friend. All right. I know I can I can probably spend a lot of time there, but let's let's move on. Amen. Uh, so you get the gist of this. Eleven, I mean twelve and thirteen talks about uh, the ones that believe and trust in Jesus Christ. They have the testimony uh, of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. And then verse fourteen. Let's listen to what he says. It says, And I beheld and behold a white cloud, and upon uh, the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a uh, loud voice to him that sat upon the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come uh, for thee to reap. Notice what it says, for thee to reap. Uh, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Amen. I guess if I had a, a title for this message and everything, it'll be the harvest of the earth. Amen. Now, God's fixing to do something. Uh, amen. And let, let me read this, then I'll get on back to that just in a second. It says, And he that sat upon the, on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was, was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came uh, out from the altar, 
which had power over fire, and he cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Uh, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, uh, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress uh, of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, uh, by the space of a thousand six hundred uh, furlongs. Amen. Now, a thousand six hundred furlongs, that is uh, two hundred miles long. And that valley, according to uh, uh, history, says that it's ten miles wide. Uh, and uh, uh, the horse's bridle, most horses that, uh, that was a, a, a good-sized horse and everything, their bridle is at about six foot. Most horses will stand higher than your head they're, when, they're, when they're standing with their head up. It's about six foot where the bridle is. Amen. So we're looking at a, at a, blood, a, a, a river of blood flowing from the wine press of the wrath of the Almighty God, uh, 200 miles long. Uh, 10 miles wide and 6 foot deep. You say, how in the world is that possible? Amen. Well, the Bible says with all things, uh, you know, God is, uh, you know, all things are possible with God. I'll get it brought out just in a minute. Amen. There's going to be such an army gathered together there of all the nations of this world. Uh, friend, there, they're going to be represented. Amen. Uh, remember, now this is a worldwide event. This is what's taken back. Notice what he said. He's going to uh, uh, thrust in the sickle, and he's going to uh, gather the vine, or he's going to gather the grapes, and then he's going to gather uh, the cluster of the vine. Uh, amen. So he's actually talking to two different about two different things here, and uh, I can't begin to tell you, friend. That's what I'm going to get back to what I was fixing to say there. And I'm not an authority on this, but I can read to you concerning what the Word of God says. Uh, on this, and uh, uh, so let's, let's turn over to the book of Isaiah just for a few moments, amen, and I want to read to you in the book of Isaiah chapter 5, now this is uh, uh, back over in the Old Testament, this is prophesied a long time before Jesus came into this world, and listen to what it says, and, and uh, you'll have to look over my reading. Uh, amen. You all know that if you listen to me that I'm not really a good hand to read, but that's all right. Uh, I do the best I can with what God gives me. Amen. Now listen to what it says in verse 1. It says, Now uh, now will I sing uh, to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. Uh, my well-beloved hath a vine, uh, and uh, a, vine, a vineyard, excuse me, hath a vineyard, uh, in a very fruitful hill, Amen. Now that vine that you're t that he's talking about there uh, in verse one, uh, that's the children of Israel, the one that he beloved, the one that was cherished, Amen. Uh, there's another place that uh, the the children of Israel uh, were called the apple of his eye, Amen. Uh, God chose a man over there in the land of us. His name was Abraham. He said, Abraham, follow me. And Abraham began to follow him. Amen. He said, go into this land that I'll show thee. Get thee up from thy house and go into a land that I'll show thee. And everywhere uh, that your footsteps, he said, I'll give it to you. And, and Abraham uh, followed God by faith. Amen. And God made some promises to Abraham. He promised Abraham that through his seed uh, that all the world would be blessed. Amen. And you know the story of Abraham. Anyway, because of Abraham's obedience to God, uh, a son was born. His, uh, his name was Isaac. Uh, and then Jacob had a son named, I mean, then Isaac had a son named Jacob. And Jacob bore 12 sons. Amen. And those 12 sons became the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. And, and the, the vine began to grow. Amen. Uh, and, and it began to shoot off, amen, uh, and, and it shot off into 12, uh, into 12 tribes uh, of the children of Israel, God's holy people, and friend, they are God's holy people today. Now, he's turned, them, he's turned his back upon them for a short space of time, 
Uh, Romans chapter 11 says over there that they've been blinded in part. Amen. Uh, they're not blind, friend. They've been blinded in part uh, that the fullness of the Gentiles might come in. Who's that? That's you and I. What time is that? It's the day of grace, friend, that we're living in, the dispensation of grace. Uh, amen. Now think about this. At the rapture of the church, all of those that have believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the true vine, and I'll read, I'll read to that just in a minute on the true vine, uh, which is Christ Jesus, amen, uh, uh, and all that believes in him that bringeth forth fruit, amen, uh, uh, and, and friend, you can't take something as big as God down into your heart and soul by belief, amen, and when Jesus comes into you, he sets up his abode through the power of the Holy Spirit of God down in you, Revelations 3.20. Let's go back to that. He said, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opened that door, he said, I will come into him and I will, uh, I will uh, sup with him and he with me. Amen. In other words, he's, what he's really saying there, he said, I'm going to come into you and I'm going to abide with you. Amen. And when you take something as big as the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, uh, it'll change you. Paul talks about a new creature. Amen. Over there, behold, old things will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. Amen. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You'll begin to shine forth, amen, uh, to the world around you. Amen. They'll notice the difference in you. They'll notice the difference in your speech, your demeanor, uh, what you talk about. Uh, amen. They'll notice a lot of things. You say, well, I'm a secret disciple. I don't know hardly how you can hold him down, friend, because when he begins to stir down in my heart, uh, amen, uh, there's a shout of glory comes out of my soul. Amen. And I just want to tell somebody about this man called Jesus. Amen. Well, let's get back into this, and, or I'll be a testifying for an hour here this morning. Amen. Let's get this read by the help of the Lord. He says in verse 2, chapter Isaiah chapter 5, he said, uh, and he fenced it. In other words, he set a hedge about it. He put a, he put a hedge around uh, uh, the vineyard. And gathered out the stones. In other words, he got all the foolishness out of it. He got all the debris out of it. He cleaned it up. Amen. And it was a beautiful place. Amen. Now, friend, when, when God comes into you, amen, uh, that stony heart that you've got, amen, uh, he's going to replace it with a heart of flesh. That's in the word of God. I believe you can find that in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, amen. But, uh, you know, he takes out that, that stony heart. And he gives you a heart of flesh. In other words, he puts compassion down in your heart and soul. Now, let's move on. Uh, he said, uh, he cleared out and gathered out all the, st uh, uh, out the stones thereof and planted it uh, with a choice vine. Amen. One that he chose. Amen. This wasn't just any vine, friend. This is one that God chose. He chose a people. Uh, amen. And let's move on. Uh, the vine and build a tire. Uh, he built, why, why did he build, build a tire? So that he could watch over it. Uh, so he set a watch over, uh, over, the, over the children of Israel uh, in the midst of it and also made a wine press uh, there and he looked uh, that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. Amen. Now, there's uh, a... When you think about the wild grapes, in other words, it took on the nature of the world. The grapes that he wanted it to bring forth, friend, uh, was uh, he wanted good grapes, amen, a grape that was pleasing in the eyes of God. Now, the world that I live in or the, the countryside and the mountains that I live in, uh, we've got a lot of grapevines. Uh, especially in the northeast facing slopes of our mountains and, uh, and, and the hollers and uh, these grapevines, they grow up and, and they, grow, they just kind of get rough. And I've, it's always been a mystery to me how that uh, a poplar tree that's 150 foot tall uh, or 100 foot tall, easy, uh, can have a wad of grapes right in the top of it and everything. How, how does the vine get up there? Well, that's a big story. <laughs> uh, I've got my idea. You, you can have yours if you want to. But though, uh, what that is, that's a wild grapevine. And it'll bring forth, uh, at, at, during at times and seasons, it'll bring forth. If the weather's good, conditions is right, 
and everything, uh, it'll bring forth grapes, and it feeds the, the, the wild beast of the family, uh, of, the, of the forest, amen. And, and it feeds, you know, those things, the turkeys and the deer and uh, the bears and uh, foxes and possums and, and, you know, just about anything will eat those wild grapes when they, when they hit the ground. Now, those wild grapes have to be shaken by a pretty hard wind because as they begin to get ripe, uh, they're, so, they're stuck pretty hard to the cluster. Uh, amen. And it takes sometimes a fierce wind uh, to shake them down. But when they come to the ground, uh, the beast of the field uh, consumes those grapes. Now, I said all of that to get on down into this just a little bit. Listen to what he said. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judea, uh, that's verse 3. O oh, inhabitants of uh, Jerusalem and men of Judea, judge, I pray you, betwixt, uh, uh, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have I done more uh, to my vineyard that I have not done in it? In other words, he done God done everything he could do. He blessed uh, the people of Israel, he, he, he watched over them, he fed them, he took care of them, he did all of these things, amen. Now, uh, there's one piece of scripture over there that talks about that uh, the vine came out of Egypt, all right? Now, we know the story how they got into Egypt, and we also know the story how that uh, God sent Moses uh, back into the land of Egypt over there and said, let my people go. And it took 10 plagues, but when the people come out, amen, uh, they had turned from a, 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 a good vine to a wild vine. Amen. They had changed. Uh, Israel uh, and the people that came out of the land of Egypt over there was polluted uh, with, the, with the things of the world, friend. They were polluted with the gods of Egypt. They were polluted with the people of Egypt. They had intermarried. Uh, they had come out. Amen. They came out as a wild vine. Amen. That's the reason why he says you're in. They brought forth wild grapes. Amen. Let's move on. And he says, what could I have done more uh, that I have done? Wherefore, when I looked uh, that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And now, uh, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge, uh, and uh, it shall be eaten up. I will break down the walls thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Uh, I will lay, uh, I will lay it to waste. Uh, it shall not be uh, pruned nor digged, uh, but there shall come up briars and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that they rain not. Rain no, rain, no rain upon it. Uh, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judea, his pleasant plant, uh, and he looked for judgment, uh, but behold, uh, oppression for righteousness, uh, but behold, a cry. Amen. So, What's, what's he saying there in the latter part of that there? Uh, when he brought forth wild grapes, uh, he, he began to, uh, to correct or try to correct. So in other words, it left the safety of a good vineyard. It left the safety of the hedged walls. It left the safety of the tire that God would set, would set over it. Amen. Because it brought forth wild grapes. Amen. God took the children of Israel and put them into captivity time after time after time down through the Old Testament. Amen. Now, let's, let's move on. I spent a whole lot of time on that. Let's move over here to Matthew chapter 13 and listen to what it says here. Uh, and starting in verse 37, and listen to what it says in this, Matthew chapter 13, I think that's one or or do I need to go back over to, yeah, but Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. He says, And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth good seed, listen to what it says, is the Son of Man. Amen. He that soweth good seed is the Son of Man. Uh, and the field 
uh, is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. Uh, the harvest is at the end of the world. Pay attention to that. The harvest is at the end of the world, uh, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and bundled into the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. Uh, the Son of Man uh, shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Now, let's, I want to read a little bit more to you. Let's go over into uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25. I want to read a little bit to you right here. Listen to what it says. And this is Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. This is Jesus. This is read writing in my Bible. Listen to what it says. The other one was uh, uh, read writing. Listen to what it says. It, when shall, no, it wasn't read right neither. Let me go back and look at that. Don't want to make a mistake there. Uh, it was read right. Amen. Now listen to what it says here. That's the words of Jesus is speaking. Here it is once again. This is the words of Jesus speaking. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. This is talking about down at the end of this thing. Uh, and, shall, and the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, uh, and shall separate them one from another, uh, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sit uh, the sheep on his right hand, and the goat, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, bless you to my father. Enter into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. Now, you can read all the way down through that. And, and uh, those scriptures, on down to verse, chapter, verse 46, and you'll find out over there that there was a group of people that done those things unto God. In other words, they served the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, they had something in their vessel. We preached a couple of weeks ago on the five wise and the five foolish. Amen. The five wise had the Holy Spirit of God in their vessel. Amen. Their oil, friend. And, and, and let me tell you, friend, that oil is perpetual. Amen. You say, how do you know that? Well, you go over and get in the book of Isaiah and you'll find a man named uh, Elijah. Uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, 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 had made a prophecy over there, and he prophesied that it wouldn't rain for a space of three uh, three years and a half. Well, you know the story, Amen. And then uh, he fled from the face of uh, of uh, Jezebel and I can't Ahab, Ahab and Je Jezebel. Yeah, I think that's the ones. He fled from them and everything, and God took him over to the brook over there, and he was fed by the ravens. Amen. When the water began to dry up, he took him into a, uh, to a nearby town. He found a woman uh, that was gathering uh, sticks so that she could make a, a, a thing of bread. Uh, amen. And, and her and her son would eat it, and they was going to die. It was a time of great famine in the land. Amen. But the man of God said, make me a little cake first. And she, and she said, I... Uh, she told him the truth. She said, Lord, I just got a little handful of meal uh, in the barrel and a little bit of oil in a cruise. Amen. He said, do what you're supposed to do. He said, do what I tell you and, and then make for yourself. Amen. Well, she made him a little cake first and then she made for her son. And the Bible says over there that the meal barrel wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil, uh, friend, ever run out of oil. Not till the time of the phantom was over. Amen. 
So God made provisions, friend. God made provisions for you, friend, if you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and that oil of salvation, amen, the Spirit of God, it will abide with you as long as you're down here on this earth, friend. And when he says come up here, you'll leave here and you'll go to be with Jesus, amen. Uh, amen. But the, the lost world is going to be left behind. Now, let's get back into our scriptures a little bit. Let's go back over here. I want to read a little bit more than this. I know I'm not doing a whole lot, nothing much more than reading a whole lot, and we may have to do another, um, another segment on this, but let's look at it again. I can't remember uh, how far I got. Let's just go ahead, and I think I read all the way down through this. I did. Uh, and, but he's talking here of a uh, of, uh, 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 reaping day. Now, I said in, when I first started that there's two classifications of people here. Uh, there's the people that are wicked. They're following the Antichrist. Then there's another group of people here, uh, friend, that's down in the last days uh, that, are, uh, that have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, you've got to remember, now they don't get saved by God's marvelous grace. Uh, and God automatically takes them out of this world. There's a harvest coming. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb right here just a little bit, and I'll, I may probably get some comments on this right here, but I believe with all of my heart, friend, uh, when this period of time takes place right here, there's going to be a separation. And that separation that I spoke of over there in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, uh, Amen, verses 31 down through there, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's talking about the same thing that I read in chapter 13 of the book of Matthew uh, of the wheat and the tares, amen, over there. Now, we live in the day and time, friend, uh, called the day of grace, amen, and, and we are the bride of Christ, those that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, amen, but there's a group of people coming in that was left behind that never knew who Jesus Christ was. There's a group of people coming in that was preached to. Chapter 7. Let's go back over into chapter 7 just for a second. And uh, uh, let me read to you just for a moment. Listen to what it says. And verse 1 says, And after these things I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth and, and, and holding the winds of the earth, uh, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor any, nor on the sea, nor tree. And I saw another angel. Boy, I tell you what, God uses angels, don't He? Uh, as He uh, ascending from the from the east, having the seal of the living God, and He cried with a loud voice uh, to uh, to the four angels uh, to whom it was given not to hurt the earth nor the sea, saying, hurt not the earth nor the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. And I heard the number, amen, uh, of them which were sealed. And there was sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel, amen. So there was 144,000 of the tribes of, of the children of Israel. Now remember, they were left behind. Why? Because that they believed not uh, the truth. They didn't believe Jesus. Amen. God had blinded them apart. Amen. Now it wasn't because of their own doing. It's because God blinded them. Why? Because this mind that was, was Israel Amen. Because they disobeyed God and they went after other gods, uh, they brought forth wild grapes. Amen. But God's given them another opportunity. Now you say, well, I'm a Jew. Do I have another opportunity? Friend, if you've heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God has pricked your heart and you come to the knowledge of sin that you don't, that, that you know Beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, you make that decision for yourself. You've got a decision to make, friend. Uh, amen. But I believe if I was you, I'd cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of my soul. Amen. During this time of grace that we're living in. Remember, 
God's grace. That's what is grace. It's the unmerited favor of God toward mankind uh, that they would believe and trust in him. There's a piece of scripture over the New Testament over there. The latter part of that over there, he said, God is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So the call has went out to all of the world. Uh, friend, and if you, if you neglect so great a salvation that God has sent into this world, you may find yourself uh, up here in this bunch up here that's going to a place called hell. Amen. You may find yourself as the devil worshiper. You may find yourself up here worshiping the beast and the devil and the, and the image that will be set up. Uh, amen. Remember now, the devil is going to set up a one world system down here. And he's going to bring every religious organization under one roof. Amen. Amen. And he's going to control all of the religious organizations. If the devil could get a hold of the church right now uh, here in the United States, and he's working on it really hard, friend, and if he could control uh, what's going out of the pulpits across the land, and there's a few men still preaching the truth, friend, these people that will stand up and give you a, a, a little uh, uh, message and, and, and tell you that you're a good person and, and do this and you need to drop your money in the offering plate and everything else like that, and then if you'll just do good and act right and, and be a good person, that you'll be all right. Friend, that's a lie out of hell. Amen. There's one way that you can get in, and that's doing by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, he said, Jesus said this, and, and you've heard it, and you've heard it, and you've heard it. I'll say it again. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend, Jesus made a way, and the only way you're going to get there is through and by him. Now, these 144,000, let's get back to them just a minute. They're going to be preaching during this time of tribulation. And they're going to preach all the way down to the end of this. And there's a multitude of people that's going to come up out of great tribulation having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, not all of them are going to be uh, seal their testimony with their own blood. In other words, not all of them are going to be martyred for the cause of Christ. Chapter 6 over there, under the fifth seal, you'll find uh, them, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them uh, that dwell upon the earth? Well, God's fixing to, he's fixing to judge them, friend. He's fixing to uh, tread the wine press of the fierce of the wrath of Almighty God. Amen. He's fixing to do that. And Jesus himself comes down here into this world, and if you want to call it a, a, a second rapture, you can. Amen. Personally, I think that God is going to take and he's going to reap the earth. The Bible says he's going to reap the earth, uh, amen, of all of the, the grapes that are out there. He's going, to, he's going to reap the wheat and the tare all together. Then the tares will be gathered out, amen, and, and it'll be uh, uh, cast into the fire. There's a place over there, and I hadn't, I hadn't read it yet. I believe it's in, I'll find it just in a second. If I can find it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not in that. Well, my goodness. But anyway, it talks about Jesus over there as being the true vine. Amen. I believe that's in John. Uh, Jesus said over there, he said, I am the vine. In other words, the true vine. When God sent forth his son into this world, friend, uh, the, the wild vine, the, uh, the one that he planted in the beginning over there, Israel, had turned into a wild vine. Amen. And it was bringing forth wild grapes. Jesus said over, I am the true vine. He that abideth in me, amen, will bring forth what? Fruit. Good fruit. Amen. If you abide not uh, in the vine, uh, amen, over there, uh, and, and, and you don't do those things that, uh, that God said for you to do, believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you're going to be cast out, friend. You cannot trust in the world system that's out there, friend. You can't trust in the world uh, to get you anywhere. Now, there's going to be a lot of people deceived back over here in Revelations, uh, and, and they're going to follow the Satan. But then it talks about, let's go back up there just for a second, in verses 12 and 13. Here is the patience of the saints. Who are the saints? That's them during the time of tribulation over there. Uh, here are they that kept the commandments of God. 
Who are those? That's the children of Israel uh, that kept what? The comm- that they, they was going to rebuild the, 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 the temple will be rebuilt during the first three and a half years. And then and they're going to come to know Jesus Christ and have the faith of Jesus. That's, there's a group of individuals over there, uh, friend, that's going to come through the tribulation period. Amen. And they're going to enter into the millennial kingdom with Jesus Christ. And I believe it's in one, one place once I didn't look it up that it talks about a third of the, of the children of Israel. One third. So that tells me, friend, that these two-thirds are going to hang on to the world. Uh, friend, it ain't everyone that cries, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of God. Listen to me. Uh, there's a lot of religious organizations out here in this world that will still be going on after the church is raptured. Amen. And there's every kind of, of heresy that you can think of being taught in the religious organizations of this world today. That's the cluster of the vine that he's talking about here. That's the system that the devil uh, sets up over here, and he put it. Why did why did the devil why did the why did the devil choose a false prophet? All right, we'll get into that fellow just a little bit deeper a little bit later on. Why did he choose a, a false prophet over there? Because he wanted to bring all the world organi- uh, religious organizations under one roof where he could control them. Why? Because there was 144,000 preacher men that's going all over the world that he could not destroy and could not stop. Amen. And the fruit that was coming from them was that multitude over in Revelation chapter 7 out of every kindred, tongue, and nation uh, that washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And I just read to you there about the saints. Let me read verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto, unto me, uh, Right, blessed are the dead which uh, die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Amen. There's a, mold, there's a lot of them going to die during that time, during that, that period of time, that seven years over there. But then hit down at the end of that seven years, uh, there's going to be, if you want to call it a rapture, you can call it a rapture. But there's a gathering. Let's, let's read it again. He said, uh, the latter part of verse 15, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then in verse 16, he said, he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth. Amen. That's not just around Jerusalem. And he says, uh, the earth was reaped. In other words, the earth was reaped. Now, these, these people that believe in uh, a, pre-mill- a premillennial, uh, pre-millennial, or a pre-tribulationary, uh, pre-tribulation rapture, and then this, this could very well believe the, be the onset of what they believe in a premillennial type rapture, in other words. I don't know. I would to God that I could tell you, friend, that, uh, that uh, the absolute facts of everything, but I don't know the mind of God. If I did know the mind of God and I tried to bring it out, somebody smarter than I am would probably try to uh, explain it all away. Uh, you man, but listen to me. Uh, the earth is going to be, wrapped, uh, is going to be harvested and uh, the cluster of the vine is going to be harvested. By the, by the Lord that set up on the cloud over there, uh, that, that first one that he's talking about there is the Lord. And he's going to go down and he's going to thrust with the sickle. Uh, and he's going to harvest uh, those that uh, are down here on this earth in the world system. And now go back to over there in uh, chapter 25 of, of, the, of Matthew. And, he's going to, and he's, it's a time of judgment. God's going to judge the world, friend. The goats are going to be on the uh, left and the sheep is going to be on the right. The goats are going to be burned with everlasting fire, friend. Those that do not believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God is not a respect of person, friend. These tribulation saints, they're going to go through a living hell down here. Amen. But then the time of their suffering, in other words, 
it's going to come, there's going to be a day when their suffering is ended. And then, it's going to, then God's going to gather the cluster of the minds of the world. That's the devil worshipers. That's all of them that are left behind, that followed uh, the satanic forces, that worship the beast and worship uh, the image of his beast. Uh, and all of them, uh, the, the false prophet and, and the ungodly system, uh, the great horde, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, Babylon uh, and all of those people. You say, well, why is he talking about what he's doing? He's giving a warning here before we get on into those other chapters, uh, amen, of what's going on. And we're fixing to see part of the corruption of this world, friend, when we begin to look at those things. And by the help of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I'll try my best to bring them out. And I hope and pray that I've not confused you this morning. He's not talking about uh, uh, this present day's people here. He's talking about the people that comes out of great tribulation during that time. And he's bringing judgment. He's going to bring, he's going to bring out the good fruit. Then he's going to examine those people and he's going to cast them to uh, the bad fruit out. The bad fruit's going into the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God. But there's a bunch of people here who said, Blessed are the dead from that time. A good friend of mine years ago and uh, put forth a question to me and I've never forgot it. He said, where is the rapture, if you want to, or the catching away or the taking out of the good people during the time of tribulation? Where are they at? You know, where is it? Well, it really doesn't, to best of my learning and my knowledge, what little bit that God has given me down through the process of time, amen, uh, other than this right here, uh, I can't tell you that, amen. But I do know that before they, uh, uh, those good people and everything like that right there, you say, well, will they enter into the, to the millennial reign of Christ in the natural body? I can't tell you that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. We're going, you know, they some mysteries in the word of God. I believe it was Solomon, uh, uh, pinned over there in, uh, in uh, Song of Solomon uh, that these uh, might not be the Song of Solomon, might have been in, uh, I think, didn't, no, Solomon didn't write it. Yeah, you know, I can't remember. But anyway, he, Solomon wrote this. My mind can't take me to where I need to go right now. But, but Solomon wrote this. He said, there's things, in other words, down here in this world, friend, this past finding now, there's things that belong, belongs to God. But I can tell you, though, that I have read the scripture over there that God will do uh, uh, with his own as it pleaseth him. Amen. I don't have a dog in that race. Amen. What I have got to do, friend, is to preach to you Jesus Christ and him crucified for the remission of sin. We're living still in the day of grace. And there's only one way you can get in. Friend, if you've heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and you turn it away uh, and you don't believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll be left behind and then you will believe the Antichrist. Matthew 24 said, If it were possible that even the very elect of God would be deceived, why are they going to be so deceived? Because God's going to send them strong delusions. Friend, God is a God of love, and he's extended grace all the way down through this thing. And he's extended his love, and he's put out his hand uh, uh, to a gainsaying people uh, uh, all, down through the, all down through the process of time over there. He called his own people a stiff-necked and hard-hearted people, talking about Israel. Amen. But here he is revealing himself, and they have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble uh, friend, uh, because when Jesus came, they refused to believe him. Amen. He came to his own, but his own received him not. Amen. Now, he's given them some earthly promises, but you and I, friend, have a heavenly promise through the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord comes today, amen. Friend, I'm going 
to be with Jesus. And if you hear this message when it comes out, and God has already come, friend, I want you to spend a whole lot of time. I hope that you can put aside the strong delusions. I hope that you can give your life for the cause of Christ. I hope you can do these things. But friend, that's not much hope. Amen. It's not, uh, you know, they, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Amen. If you make, if you make the decision to put it off and keep putting it off, there'll come a day and time, friend, when the Holy Spirit of God will quit working with you. And that's not a good place to be. Please don't put it off. If God has touched your heart, amen, there is a wine press that God's going to trod without the gates, amen. They hung our Lord and Savior outside the gates of the holy city, amen. This will be done in a valley just north of Jerusalem, amen, this valley over there. And, and uh, friend, it's not going to be a pretty sight. It's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, this is the judgment of blood. God's going to tread it. And the Bible says that blood will come to the horse's bridle. Uh, amen. Six foot deep, 200 miles long. Amen. As it goes into the it flood, and it'll just go right on down and dump into the sea, friend. Listen to me. This is real. This is real. Say, so, preacher, you're scaring me. I hope I can. Amen. I hope I can scare you into looking into the word of God, listening to the word of truth, and believing in the word of truth, and asking Jesus Christ to come down to your and, and save you by God's marvelous grace. Amen. That's a message God's given us today.